I feel as a whole, what we need to do is to focus on our disadvantaged children and what we're going to do about it. So this is what the data says. And you can see that there are some schools where they're doing a better job at me meeting um, progress data. This is progress data, not, not attainment data. Progress data. And it's the gap between that achieved by uh, children with disadvantage and that achieved by their peers, basically. And you can see at the top, we've got the national picture. So we, nationally, there is a gap. We're not saying that there isn't one, although you can see that in some cases, actually, some of our children, our disadvantaged children, are actually doing as well, or if not better, than our, um, than our non-disadvantaged children. But you can see that generally, as a whole, there is an issue. So we feel that we need to do something about that. Um, I've, we talked as heads, as a group, and I've done a lot of reading around it. Uh, people like Daniel Sobel is good to read. Um, there are others as well, and I know Daniel Sobel is working within the Trust elsewhere from us, but he is. Um, but these are the things that people said were the issues. I don't think there's any surprise there, really. I think those are what we know, that children of dis with disadvantage, actually, that's what they come in with. So, poor behaviour for learning, poor absence, or rather high absence, poor levels of well-being, lack of parental support, poor life experiences, you know, some children have never been out of the village they live in. And high mobility, those children who, they go from school to school to school to school, so they never get a chance to settle in and, and start learning. So, what evidence, what, what, what um, the DfE say, this is where this is from, this quote, they say that you need to have a tiered approach. They suggest that that is the best approach to, to think about how you're going to deal with it from three different areas. So the first one is improving the quality of teaching for all children. If you improve the quality of teaching for all children, then obviously that will have an effect on disadvantaged children. Then those children who we do have, the, the disadvantaged uh, population, make sure that what you're giving them in addition is actually effective. So make sure you are using evidence-based interventions. Some of our schools are doing that, others are not. And then finally, supporting whole school strategies to improve attendance, behaviour and readiness to learn. Those are the three strands. So this is my proposed response. So the training and CPD and improving teaching generally. Trust is already doing this. There's lots of things going on for trust. The use of teacher tracker, the use of team teaching, the use of, from the ESIT team, the reading for real, the maths TRGs, apprenticeship, all of those things are happening to improve teaching. What we as a hub have decided we need to do for that is to look at mixed year group maths teaching because we've got several schools where there is a, an issue with uh, mixed group year groups. Pursuing a writing project and making sure that we introduce better tracking system for our pupil premium grant, that's what that is, children and making sure that it's a focus when we have pupil um, progress meetings. In terms of targeting support, there's less happening as a trust, although there is the phonics intervention that, that we are seeing and it's being used well. Uh, but I f we feel that what we need to do is to have 
a sharing of good practice because as I said earlier there are some schools within the, within the hub that are doing this well so we need to use those people to help us to uh, identify where to go forward. As a trust, the last one, behaviour, attendance, readiness to learn, some of that comes in there, some of it comes in you know, ensuring that children are ready to learn, but others, we've got a behaviour and wellbeing strategy team, but it's in its infancy. Where I would like to, and this is why I'm here today, is to say please can I have, is to have our uh, ESIT member for, for behaviour and wellbeing to help us develop our practice and provision within the hub and to build something new which is behaviour and wellbeing champions. So our proposal is to develop the provision in-house through our behaviour and wellbeing ch um, champions. We want this to be pre-CAMS. There is so much evidence now that says that actually we, I think it's 150 children a week are turned down for CAMS nationally. That's, that's NSPCC um, data, not mine. So because of that, we need to make sure that we're in earlier than that. Um, we don't want children to reach crisis because if they do reach crisis, then it then becomes a much, much uh, bigger effect on outcomes. So what we'd like to do, we want to have a meeting for all of the um, senior leadership team members in the hub. I will make it nice, we'll have, we'll have pizza and things <laughs> in a nice pub and do that sort of thing, so, because we need them to buy into this. Uh, we need to develop a behaviour and wellbeing champion um, for every school. This will be difficult for some schools because some schools are only small, but I feel that it could be a nursery nurse or a TA or, you know, it doesn't have to be somebody new and it can be a part-time role. We then want to um, make sure that we train the whole of the hub on behaviour and wellbeing and then ensure that we go out into schools to continue that with those that need it. We need to find out what our current champions, what their strengths are and share them. And we need to make sure that we're giving them regular CPD from our ESIP member. And also we build in a shared resource drive and we obviously need to monitor outcomes. There is a glimmer of light in that if we do this, there is an, an EEF Education Endowment Fund uh, grant that I've talked to Tim uh, Moat and uh, Rebecca about to try and um, apply for some additional funds because I do think that this is something that is going to work. That's my gut feeling, is it something that's going to work. If we get this right, we then can take it to the rest of the, to the, rest of the trust. But it's something that as a hub we want to try and develop. So that's what I'm here for is please can I have <laughs> some time for Rebecca. So initially I would like two days a week for the hub and then going down from there probably in the first go to the second um, half term it will be a day a week and then even after that to have regular input but she won't need to be there all the time. But as a hub that's what I feel we need. Questions and feedback. So in a way it's a good example of a, a developmental project that could impact on other areas and it could be a strategic way of moving forward in other areas in terms of uh, test I think so. pilot. Yes, I think so. I think that's, I think it answers the question for us as a hub, mm. but it has the potential to answer the question beyond. That's what I would say. Fully supportive. Oh, thank you. As far as the hub response, the mixed year group mass and the writing project yes. you put up there, what's that actually going to look like? Because you're obviously concerned about mixed year group mass teaching. Mm -hmm. Some schools may struggle to avoid that. Yeah, yeah, it's not that we want to avoid it, it's a fact. So what we want to do is to find a way of making it work. So actually we've got Sarah here who is the person who is going to lead that along with our ESIT member. They're going to have um, TRG 
a TRG group based with those people who are our maths leads in the um, in our hub to try to work out how to do mixed year group mm. maths because there are several schools in our in our hub some of them tiny we've got one that's 37 pupils we've got to find a way of being able to deliver that so Sarah's agreed to take that on so we're really talking about development of the teachers and the teaching practice yes rather than altering the yes absolutely oh yes absolutely right. okay. yeah yeah and the writing project that is uh, taken on by two other heads um, Amanda and uh, Paul who are uh, intending to do some uh, it's basically competition but it's giving people children a reason for writing so the idea is that they're going to have, there's going to be a, a a hub writing event because again those children, who are particularly our disadvantaged children, don't have life experiences to be able to write about. So it really limits their writing. So this is about trying to give them something that they can write about and be part of and enjoy. And, and can I make a suggestion? Mm. Although other governors will thank me for this. Mm. One of the things we do, we have a, a governor's prize every year. Governor's chuck in a tenner and they buy book tokens or a cup or whatever. And the topic is agreed between the governors and the staff. And one year we had that very thing, a writing test, no, not particularly test, but a writing exercise, yeah. mm. which was then judged. And the, the winner got the book token and the yeah. recognition at an assembly. Fantastic. And if you could do it on a local basis rather than a trust type basis. Yeah. Great. There may be future in there. I will take that. I will <coughs> take that suggestion. Thank you. But when it comes to the tenor, don't mention my name. <laughs> I think um, my only observation and, and maybe suggestion are particularly around um, the number of days being requested and I think as Richard said in terms of the developmental model it's, it's really exciting mm -hmm. is that we have got other schools in the trust with high levels of um, disadvantage mm -hmm. and maybe having the flexibility for Rebecca to pull on maybe some of the behaviour and wellbeing champions from other schools within the trust that aren't necessarily yes. niche riding and yes. pull yes. Um, who are actually doing the work on the ground as yes. part of the school yes. and using them as part of that yes. support not just pulling on one person. Yeah, no, I think that's really I think that would be really effective. Yeah, yeah. And then that strengthens Absolutely. networks as well. Absolutely. Yeah, I do think it's about learning from yeah. those people who are just as good. Is there Thank any you. potential to look at uh, pupil premium children and any correlation between our SEN and possibly, obviously, for starting with this pilot and going ahead for a year, but then to start to look at, are we drilling down into the data to see if there's any learning barriers with our pupil premium children and actually mm. could the work of the SEN specialist along with mm. the wellbeing lead actually, is there any way we could develop the programme so those yes, two absolutely. weave together so we can then know which is our SEM barriers and which is that's our... That's a good idea. Food. Maybe what I can do is ask for um, the, the hub centre, Chris, mm. for they need to, to get involved in that. That would be a good idea.